Hi, this is Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom, and today what I want to do is I want to show you how to uh, implement both the G major pentatonic primarily uh, scale with the open chords of G, C, and D, and we're going to be using the first position of G major pentatonic and the second position. So to prep you for this, let's just go through a little bit of what we're going to be using. I'm going to be using a G chord. Now you could use a three finger G or a four finger G, whatever's most comfortable for you. I'm going to be using four finger. That way I can move to a C add nine, uh, which I just take these two fingers and move down one string, which sounds really nice. Now, if you'd rather play your C this way, that's perfectly fine. I'll probably do that a few times myself. And then we've got our D chord. So that's the basic template. Now we could use other chords in the key of G with this, like E minor or uh, A minor or B minor. Any of that kind of stuff would be just fine as well. Um, you know, any of those kind of things. But I just want to show you some, the, the big thing is, is showing you how to create some really cool open string licks uh, using the major pentatonic uh, along with the uh, chords. So let's start off by understanding just a little bit of basic, basic theory. Okay, I don't want to bore you with this, but um, what we need to do is understand that G major pentatonic is the same as E minor pentatonic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up just a little bit on the fretboard so you can see this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up and I'm going to play you on the fifth fret of the sixth string. I'm going to play an A minor pentatonic scale so you can visualize it and you'll have the tab for this as well. So a minor pentatonic, whenever you play a minor pentatonic, uh, our first position, our main position, the primary position is going to start with your first finger. So I'm on the uh, fifth fret of the sixth string, which is a, and I'm going to play okay. So I'm playing five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, and then five, eight, five, eight. So a really easy way to memorize this is you've got a, a one, four, first finger, fourth finger on the sixth string, and then you have three, one, threes, one, three, one, three, one, three, that go right down the gut here. And then you end with two more one, fours, one, four, one, four. So you have one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. That's how you play the minor pentatonic in the first position. First position because you're starting with your first finger on the root. So it's easy to visualize. So if you wanted to play G minor pentatonic, you'd move down to the third fret, uh, which is G, and you play the exact same shape. One, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Okay. So that's what we're going to be using. Okay. The problem is, is that's minor pentatonic. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this as major pentatonic. And again, if you know this, you can fast forward just a little bit here. Um, but if you need some refresher, or you don't really know how this works. These are great little tricks. So if I wanted to play a major pentatonic, what I would do is take that first finger, which is on A right now, and I'm going to move that direction three frets. One, two, three. Now, which is actually F sharp. I'm going to play the exact same shape, and this is this is the truth, okay? If you want major pentatonic, you just move that way, three frets, one, two, three, and you start there and play the exact same shape. So you have one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are you starting on F sharp? Well, the truth is, if you if you look at this shape that you just played, but instead of focusing on the first note that we're playing, which is the F sharp, Let's focus on the second note that you're playing with your pinky, which is A. Now, instead of going to the F sharp like that and making F sharp sound more important, let's go to the A and make the A sound more important. And now all of a sudden it begins to sound like A, okay? This is the cool thing about music is the different notes that we emphasize at different times makes the scale sound different. Okay? So when you want A minor pentatonic, you start on the fifth fret and you play that shape. When you want A major pentatonic, you move down three frets and you essentially start with the pinky. Now, does that mean you couldn't play the first finger? No, you could play the first finger, but you don't want to 
emphasize the sound of that note, which is F sharp. Otherwise, it's going to sound like F sharp minor pentatonic. See, we want to go to that pinky and emphasize the sound of that pinky. So just a brief little bit of theory for you of how that's working, okay? Now, I'm going to bump it up to the next level, and then we're going to go back to what we were doing, okay? So a little bit of tidbit for you that might really help you. So think about it this way. If I go to the fifth fret of the sixth string, which is A, and I play that shape, I'm playing A minor pentatonic. But if I stayed in that position and started or emphasized the pinky note, which is C, I'm playing in C major pentatonic. Because think about it, if I put my first finger up here on C, and played minor pentatonic, I'd be fine. Moving back three frets puts me on A. So a great visual picture for you to get used to using this first position, which is what we're gonna be using mostly right now. When you start with your first finger on the root that you want, you're playing minor pentatonic. A minor pentatonic, or B minor pentatonic, or C minor pentatonic, whatever it is you want. Same, the shape moves no matter where you go, same shape. But if you go to that and you start with your pinky and emphasize the pinky note. Now again, that doesn't mean you can't play this note, but you want to emphasize this sound. Then you get major pentatonic, okay? So no matter where you go on the guitar, if you start with your first finger, like right here, if I go to F sharp and I play that shape, it's gonna sound like F sharp minor pentatonic. If I emphasize the pinky note, it's going to sound like A major pentatonic, and here's why. In this case, F sharp minor pentatonic and A major pentatonic are the same scale. They use the same notes. They're exactly the same. The only difference is the emphasis. Here you're emphasizing F sharp. Here you're emphasizing A. Okay, they use the same notes. They are the same scale. It's just you're emphasizing something else. It's really important to understand that as we go through this, okay? Um, because what I want to be able to do is I'm going to move down to G. Now, if I play G minor pentatonic, it's right here. If I want G major pentatonic, I have to move back three frets. One, two, three, which puts me open. So I've got to visualize this as 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3. Okay, which is E minor pentatonic and G major pentatonic. Okay, now the fingers that you use, it's going to be whatever's most comfortable for you. You know, when I'm playing up here, I'm using 1, 4, and 1, 3. But when I'm in the open position, I don't have a 1, right? Because I don't have to press on anything. So my fingering might change a little bit. And the fingers that I use are going to be relative to the chord that I'm playing. If my other fingers are busy, I'm going to use whatever, whatever finger I've got available. So what we want to do is now, if we kind of understand that, we're going to be playing G major and C major, however you want to play that, and D major, and we're going to be overlapping this scale. Which is the same scale we played up here, we're just using open strings now. Okay, so the trick here is, is to start getting comfortable with being able to do certain little movements with that scale, okay? So for instance, here I've got myself a G chord. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start talking about, we're going to talk about three things here. We're going to talk about picking, hammer-ons, pull-offs, and sliding. Those are the three different categories of things that we're going to use to start creating some licks. And I'm going to give you some ideas. You're going to have the tab for it. And then from there, you can just kind of go off and make up your own things, which is pretty cool. Okay, so here's my G chord. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting comfortable with just picking out some scale ideas from the pentatonic scale that's overlapping this chord. Okay, and right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, we'll call them, if I'm strumming this... 
at that speed, I'm going to use quarter notes to pick with just for now. So watch this. I'm going to do this. The cool thing about this is, is I could pick any notes I want and I can start anywhere I want in terms of the rhythm. I don't have to play the same rhythm every time. So if I think about it, I'm going to use... Now again, could I use the open? Sure I could. But I want to return here because I want my, my listener to, to really hear that G far more than the E sound. I don't really want that. I can use it in, in a lick, but I want to return back to that G to give that G tonality, okay? So what we want to do is start exploring some things that we could do. Now what I want to show you is how the rhythms can change. Right here I was going... Now the first thing is just shifting that, so I might do something like this. or I could go backwards. See, I could I could do any combination of those ideas. I could skip over strings. kind of thing that I want to make up. So please understand right now I'm just using groups of one, two, three, four when I'm doing that, but I could certainly do less or more. So let's talk about that a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change up where I'm playing that lick, so to speak, right? So now I'm going to go... So now I'm starting a little bit later in the rhythm and I'm only playing three notes, okay? My three, I'm playing two patterns. I'm playing zero, two, zero, and then I'm playing two, zero, two. You see, again, I could do that anywhere I want. So now I got a pattern of three. anywhere I want. So now I'm playing a pattern of three. So just to show you, I played a pattern of four, I played a pattern of three or licks if you want. Um, and I don't have to start them in the same places every time. I could go... I just have to feel something to make it fit somewhere, right? Now because we're playing quarter notes, we don't have a whole lot of choices, although we're going to start getting faster in just a little bit. Now could I play those those picked notes as eighth notes instead of quarter notes? Sure. But instead of picking all that, that's going to lead to our second discussion, which is hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now we're going to use those hammer-ons and pull-offs to make eighth note sounds, and then we're going to, and again, you can do whatever you want. I'm just giving you some ideas. So I'm going to use hammer-ons and pull-offs to create eighth note sounds, and then I'm going to use picking for my quarter note sounds. So let's just look at some ideas of uh, hammer-on pull-offs. And then we're going to start combining those two. And we're going to just keep expanding as we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. I'm going to use... Again, I'm using my first and my, my second fingers because I'd normally be on a G at this point. Um, you could use other fingers if you want to. But I'm just hammering from zero to whatever fret I need. Zero three, zero two, zero two, zero two, zero three, zero three. So just to give you an example. That 
that'd be hammer-ons. And you'll notice they're going twice as fast. I'm doing eighth notes. The reason I'm doing that is because sometimes picking, for a lot of players, picking is harder than hammer-ons or pull-offs because it's harder to get the pick accurate at faster speeds. So hammer-ons and pull-offs are really nice because they can make things faster with less effort. So we're going to learn how to combine those quarter note picking with these eighth note hammer-ons and pull-offs. But let's finish our, our hammer-ons and pull-offs. So there I'm showing you hammer-ons. Let's look at pull-offs. So pull-offs I could do, right? Again, whatever fingers relative to what's available to me at the time. Okay, so now let's do some pull-off ideas with this G chord. So now what we could do is we could start combining hammer-ons and pull-offs, okay? So now I'm going to use a hammer-on and a pull-off at the same time. So here on the third string, I'm just going from zero, hammering to two with my first finger, and then pulling back off to zero. See that? So I'm smacking that finger down and then I'm pulling it back off. Now, to make sure I don't get any noise from these thinner strings, uh, like this, you kind of get that. What I do is after I do my pull off, I just kind of come to rest on those thinner strings to deaden them. I don't press on them, I just deaden them. Like that, okay? So now let's start using some hammer-ons and pull offs separate and together. Now watch this. Sorry. Now I could do that on any strings. You know, anywhere I want to go. That's the fun of this is that you start thinking about what you're seeing and the mechanics of hammering or pulling and then adding hammer-ons and pull-offs, okay? So right here I'm going. So I'm hammer, hammer, and then hammer, pull on the last one. Here, I'm doing a, ha a pull-off, pull-off, and then a hammer, pull, hammer. Hammer, pull, I should say, that's what it is. Okay? So I could do this reversed and do a pull and then a hammer. But the problem with that is, is if I end my sequences with that, it puts my finger in a place where I might have to move it really quick to get back to a chord. That's why one of the tricks to all of these sorts of things is to end on an open string, because then you can just go back to the chord. There's nothing wrong with that, that's fine. But if I did this, I can wave to my grandma and get ready for my chord at the same time, right? So that's what's really nice about that is ending with some sort of open string gives you the freedom to get your fingers back to wherever you want them to go, okay? So we've got picking at quarter note speed. And yes, we can pick at eighth note, but let's just, just stay with me. So picking at quarter note speed, hammer on or pull off at eighth note speed. So now what we could do is we could start combining picking and hammer on pull offs to create licks. So there, what I'm doing is I'm going hammer, hammer, and then open, and then picking this string. So I'm picking two strings. So I slow down there. I'm doing eighth notes going into quarter notes. And notice that since I'm landing on this note, it's already part of my chord. I can just go back. So there's just a whole host of really cool things that you can do with that. Again, don't get lost in what the lick is, 
Think about the mechanic of it. Don't really worry about where you're doing it, like fifth string and fourth string or fourth string and third string. Think about the mechanic of it. You're getting comfortable with just doing picking, whatever it is. Then you're doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then you've got hammer-on pull-off combinations. And you can do those anywhere. So it's pretty systematic when you get onto it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hammer-on pull-off combination as a 16th note. Now let's make that, we'll do this. That might be a little bit easier to follow. So now what I'm doing is because I can make these hammer-ons and pull-offs faster, I'm going to do a really quick hammer-on pull-off here from zero two to zero on the third string and then I'm doing two pull-offs. Now at some point here, what you want to start having happen is the natural or organic element of what tends to flow out of you as you're playing, right? Some things that you're going to try and do are going to feel more comfortable than others. You want to embrace those things that are comfortable to you because those are the ones that are most natural to you, okay? So again, I always think of this as short-term and long-term or small wins and big wins. You want to find the things that as you're practicing these, these sorts of licks, which ones, which strings or which movements or which rhythms feel most comfortable for you and you want to be aware of that because if you're jamming with somebody those are the kind of things that are going to flow out of you okay then those are the small wins the big wins are okay so it seems like i'm doing the same thing over and over and over what are some other ideas right either i change the lick or i change where i'm placing the lick rhythmically in this in this idea and then you work on those, okay? But but don't just look at what I'm giving you and go, well, I need to learn all of these different licks. I'm gonna show you different things, but the, the goal is for you to figure out where it tends to, to occur naturally. And then once you've got that and you understand where these natural movements are, then you can start expanding from there and making some different things. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start combining those ideas with sliding. Now I'm gonna give you some different slide licks here to use here. So sliding, what works really well is using, there's certain ones, I mean, there's lots of different things that you can do. Again, you've got all those notes that you can use, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start expanding out from what we call the first position into the second position of pentatonic. Now, everything works the same way. We're not gonna go into big detail on the second position because that's not what this is about. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding on the note from three, we're gonna add on five, and we're going to, on the second string, we're going to do the same thing. Three, we're going to add on five. Okay. And then on the uh, third string, we're going to add on the four. And then on the fourth string, we're also going to add on the four. Okay. Now, sometimes we can add the five. And that sounds cool, too, because that's, that's actually appropriate uh, for the scale, is adding in that five. I'm going to be using the four for now, just because I'm going to show you some cool licks to do with that. So again, it can expand as much as we want, but let's just focus on five, three, zero, five, three, zero, four, two, zero, four, two, zero, just to make it easier for us to see. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is before we go into the slides, like I just said, because right, I was forgetting this, we should probably start using some hammer on pull offs with those. So let's try and figure out how we could use 420420 in some licks. How about this? A little bit harder. Because you gotta get back. 
So there I'm just doing 0, 2, 4, 0, 2, 4. You'll notice I'm using my pinky. You could use your third finger. I don't know why I use my pinky. It just feels more comfortable. So now if we could make it faster, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2, 4, 2, 0 quite fast. And then I'm going to do 4, 2, 0 on that one. So I'm kind of combining hammer-ons and pull-offs here. See, so you can do lots of really neat things like that, okay? Here we could use... So right there what I'm doing is I'm doing a hammer-on pull-off from 3 to 5 to 3. Then doing a pull off to zero. Then I'm just going down the line. Or I could do it on the second string. Or see that? Remember, at any time you can just stop the video, you can look at the tab and export. But the point is, is now you're seeing how I've expanded from the first position of pentatonic and I'm adding some notes in the second position of G major pentatonic, which is the same as E minor pentatonic. And I'm using pull-offs or hammer-ons or hammer-on pull-off combinations. Right? Or I could just sit up here. But again, if I can end on an open string, it gives me a chance to get back to the chord. So right there, what I'm doing is going three, five, three is a hammer on pull off, and then five, three, zero, which lets me get back. Again, the rhythm is whatever. I can make anything out of those rhythms, okay? So we've got some hammer-on pull-offs that have now expanded, okay? Now let's move into the sliding idea. Now the sliding idea is very similar to the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, except what we're gonna do is physically slide. So for instance, see what I'm doing there is I'm using two so I'm sliding up to four sliding back to two and then the second time I'm doing the same thing but I'm adding a pull off at the end and it gives a kind of cool sound Again, in theory, I should be going up to that five pentatonically, but it just sounds so weird. It's so big, it's so it's such distance. So a lot of times when you hear acoustic players playing this stuff, they'll use the four instead, which is actually coming from the actual major scale. But again, we're not worried about theory right now. We're just learning how to play some cool stuff. You could do that. Any of those strings would work just fine for that sort of thing. Okay? So now you've got all of these different things. You could start combining single note or picking, I should say, at, at quarter note with hammer ons, pull offs, with slides, and you got all kinds of different things. So now let's start looking at some other kinds of slides that we can do and some other kinds of hammer-ons that require double stops, which is two strings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to these two notes 
which is the bottom of our G chord there. And we're going to start learning how to slide both of those. Okay, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move into a couple of different ones here as well. We're going to use this one. So we're going from three, five, three. And this one I'm using one and two. And I'm sliding up a whole step. Okay, now both of those can be pulled off to zero. Sorry. Either one of those can do that. Okay, now let's put it in in a 4 4 time here. So we have. Now instead of switching those fingers, let's try and just do this. This is what I do. See, that can keep my chord. See that? It's pretty cool. And then I've got these. Put a little bit earlier. Now let's do a pull off. See what I mean? So you can add those anywhere you want. Okay. Now we're going to build something a little bit different that I really love to play. I'm going to give you two more ideas here. What I like to do is this sort of thing. I'll use this and then I'll go into this little thing here, which is, is going to connect to my G major bar chord. So what I do is use these. Okay, now I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing this. If you were using this full slide of these two notes, what you're going to do is you're going to slide up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make like a D chord here with this first finger going to the second fret of the third string. My third finger is going to stay right there. And I'm going to hammer on with my pinky to the fourth fret of the third string. So what it does is it creates these two notes right here, which are the ones we were sliding to, which is the middle of this G chord. So it's a cool little lick. It's kind of a Jimi Hendrix lick, uh, you know, Steve Ray. Like that. And you don't have to use them both together. You can use them separately. Right? So it works out really well. Now, what I'm going to show you how to do next here is the same idea, only what we're going to do is we're instead of sliding up the whole lick, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a hammer on pull off on the second string. And then we're going to go to that. And when I go to it this time, you'll notice my fingering's a little different just because it feels more comfortable to me. So I'm going three, three, hammering to the five on the second string and then pulling back off. And then here I go to my first and second fingers and I do that hammer on. Okay, you could use whatever you want. You know, if you'd rather go to your first and third like you did before and do that hammer under the pinky, it's okay. Right, whichever one you like, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Okay, so again, now we're expanding a bit more into this position, but using these double stops, which sounds more chordal. Isn't that cool? There's just so many really great things that you can do with all of these different ideas. Okay? So what I want you to think about is combining those together, exploring all of those. Okay? Now again, the goal isn't, isn't for you to learn all of these licks. Right? I'm just organically improvising. Okay? You take the things that make the most sense or the ones where you go, wow, that's a really neat idea, and you start exploring rhythmically how you can do them differently. Right? Everything doesn't have to go... <laughs> doesn't have to be long. You might go. There's
there's so, you know, rhythmically, there's just a million different things that you could do with this. So just getting your brain to turn a little bit different and go, oh yeah, I never really thought about doing some of that stuff before. Add it into your playing and let's see where it takes you. So take care and remember, anytime you need help, email us. Um, you know, let's talk about it during the next, you know, live sessions when we talk about things or um, go to the community, the Guitar Zoom community page and talk to people there. Um, and even if you get a chance, post something. You know, if you could post a video of you playing, that would be awesome. That way everybody can see what you're learning and, and how it's coming for you. So take care and I'll talk to you soon.